Hey, Power Uppers, what's up? Welcome back. It's been a long time since I made a video, but I'm happy I have the time to do it today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a fun word cloud out of social media data. In specific, I'm going to show you how to use a Power App to call the Twitter search API to return who's tweeted a given hashtag in the last 30 days and then make a really cool word cloud out of that. So let's get started. Okay, so where do we get started here? Well, if you've joined the Power Apps community call before, you've probably seen this slide in the slide deck that we show every month. And we like to show this slide to recognize who's been tweeting with the Power App CC hashtag. So we like to give those folks credit and you know, com encourage the community adoption and all of us helping each other out as we learn and do awesome things with this technology. So I thought, well, you know, this is pretty cool and I love doing this and I manually create this slide off of TweetDeck every month. It takes me a while. So I thought there's got to be a better way. So what I did is I worked with my coworker, Cloris Sun, and I let Cloris know what I was trying to do and how I was trying to pull this data back from Twitter in a way that would allow me to have a little bit more automation so I wouldn't have to manually do it every month. And so she helped me create this solution. And when I was done with the solution, now we've got this cool way to honor everybody who's been tweeting Power App CC in the last month. And the really neat part is, is I can make a new one of these in about 10 seconds every month now. So this is what I'm gonna show you how to do today. How can we use the Twitter API to search for the Power Apps CC hashtag and create this awesome word cloud. Let's get started. Okay, so before we really dig into the code and see how we wrote this, let's just actually run it and see what we get back and see how our app works. So here's my Power App, and it is going to call this Twitter search API the premium 1.1 sandbox API, which is free if you only need to go 30 days back and you don't need to use it a lot, which is my case. So here's what I'm going to search on my hashtag in Twitter for. And here's my from date. And I'm going to pick the day after our last community call. As you probably know, our community call happens on the third Wednesday of every month. So the 21st would be the day after our last call. And then here's today's date. So now I can click search. And what happens is I've gone out and I've actually hit this Twitter API and I pulled the data back. I'm pulling it back in two different ways to show you it. The first one on the left is the raw way that I get the data back from the Twitter API and the Azure function that I wrote to wrap that API. What I do in the Azure function, or what I should say Cloris did because she wrote the Azure function, is she returned the data and I asked her to put how many times somebody tweeted within that, that hashtag in that given time frame. So we can see somebody created something called the Power Platform Bot, which did 15. Power App CC uh, tweets, and Reza did 14. Uh, Dwal, he's always up there at the top with this hashtag. He did nine. So as you can see, in this case, I have everybody who tweeted it ranked in the from the order of most tweets to little, least tweets on the bottom, and I have the number. Well, when I wanted to take this one step further and make that really cool word cloud, I found that having this number in the back wasn't needed with the tool that I chose to create the word cloud. So I created this representation of the data by keeping it ranked in the order of who has tweeted this hashtag the most, but I've removed how many times that they have tweeted it. As you can see, it's absent here on the right. So once I have this data back, now I'm just gonna go highlight that and I'm gonna copy it. So this is all the folks in the last month who've tweeted Power Apps CC. And then I'm gonna to come to this cool wordart.com website that I found. And this allows me to make cool word clouds. So I'm gonna clear the data in it. And then I'm gonna go import. And I'm gonna paste in that data that I have my Power App do all the work for me on. And then I'm gonna change these settings here to pretend this is a CSV coming in. I found with this program, you don't actually have to put a comma after every one if you put them one line in a row, which worked out really easily with my Power App. 
So now I click import words and then I can click visualize and boom, I've got an awesome word cloud of all the folks who tweeted Power App CC. So let's go find one a little bit more applicable to what a community looks like. And I thought everyone in our community is an all-star. So I like to select this one and visualize again. And now that I have visualized that information, check out my cool word cloud. It's even got animations on it and everything. Pretty slick, huh? What I can now do is I can download this word cloud. I can put it in a PNG or a JPEG. Look, at it even has SVG. Or if I want to have it animated, I can pull down the HTML and it'll do these cool effects like you see here. Pretty neat, isn't it? So what I did is I downloaded the PNG file for it and then I just merely put that PNG file right here inside of my slide deck. And so now you can see how I actually went about it and it's pretty simple. So every month from now on, when I want to make this slide for the community call, all I have to do is update these dates, copy these values, pick a new graphic in here, and paste it in. And now I've got a cool new word cloud. I'm sure you could find other things that would be awesome to use this for in your life or in your organization too. So that's pretty much the, what does it look like? What is the demo? What did I build? Now I'm going to get into, for some people, maybe the more boring part. For other people, it may be the more exciting part. How do we do this technically? So let's jump in and examine that next. If we return to the Power App, I did show you some clues on how we're doing this under the hood and talked about which Twitter API this is. So I'm going to give you more details about that now. This is the Twitter search endpoint we're actually using to do this. And you may be wondering to yourself, Todd, why? Why are you building this? Power Apps has a Twitter connector right out of the box you could use. And you're right, it does. But will it learn will it allow me to search by hashtag 30 days into the past? And the answer is no. And that's why I had to write my own Twitter connector here. So as we look at this, we see that there's the premium 1.1 API free and scalable to the last 30 days of tweets. So that met my particular use case here quite fine. And if we go and look more closely at the pricing related to this API, this is the sandbox version uh, you can have, or you can use the premium version here. They just depend on what you need to do uh, and how far back you need to go, how much data you need, etc. The search tweets API then is wrapped in this Azure function. This Azure function, as you can see, is triggered off an HTTP request, which the Power App will make, and then it will call the search tweets function. Now, the search tweets function has been deployed, uh, obviously, as you can see, to a Azure uh, function app running inside of Microsoft Azure. So now, if we take a closer look at the code within this particular Azure function, we can see it looks like this. So really, the function that gets called first by the Power App is this one called Get Twitter Users. And we pass in the query that we want to do our search on. In this case, that's our Power App CC hashtag. The from is the from date and the to is the to date. So the beginning date and the end date is what we have here. We go get our access token, make a couple collections, and then we start, after we have an access token, we start calling search Twitters. Maybe you could call it search tweets, whatever you like. We pass in access token, again, the query, the from date, the to date, and next then what this we're going to do here is we are going to keep going through and we are going to keep um, adding the users to our users list right here uh, and getting them all back. Then after we do that, what we're going to do is I talked about how they were grouped and how, um, here is where they're grouped and where we inject that count uh, of the raw data that comes back to the Power App. So the next thing that I would like to do is return back here to the Power App itself. 
and I can show you in the search here. When we click search, we can see it's calling search Twitter. So that was the uh, Logic App connection I made to that particular function app. And then the run, and you can see here, what are we passing in? Well, the first thing we're passing in is that date, and then we have the other date, and then we have the text input that text right here. If we make this smaller, we can see what that's referring to. That's coming right out of here. This is text input that text. So those are the three things that get passed into the connector when we run it, and it returns us this Twitter users collection. So let's go take a look at that collection now. Here's what my Twitter's users collection has. It has a count and a name in it. So if I come back here and play the app now, and I'll repeat that query I did before from the day after the last community call to today, hit search. It goes and gets that data and brings it back. Now we can see we have the data. And now let's go take a look at our collection again. Here we can see that count and the name. So that's what our raw data looks like that we have there. There's the first few rows of it. So back in my app, what do I do when I get that data back? Well, here, this is my gallery with the count, and I have it bound to that Twitter users collection that we saw. And here, <clears throat> I'm concatenating the first, the, the name column with the count column and that's how I'm able to put that data just like this. Now over here, I didn't need that count, so I'm just saying in this one that I just want to pull back the name value from that collection. And that's really as simple as it gets as far as the Power App is concerned. You may be wondering about my connection. Here is my search Twitter, uh, Twitter connection to that logic flow. Uh, which represents my Azure function. So as we drop back into the code at a deeper level here, now we can see when that button is clicked, get Twitter users is what actually fires. I talked about the parameters that get passed in from the Power App and how it ultimately calls into Search Twitters. And then inside of Search Twitters, here's where we actually go out to Twitter and do the work. You can see that I'm doing taking care of my authorization right here by getting back an access token. Uh, my access token is handled down in this method right here. Uh, you will find all this code to interact with the Twitter API like this right on the Twitter API documentation website. The important thing to point out right here, and this is the string that I had back in the Power App, this is the actual line of code that is going out and invoking the 30-day search on Twitter's API. And you can see it's coming off a client, which up here is defined it's an HTTP client. So simple C-sharp approach to invoking an API using the bearer token to authorize ourselves, and then returning the data and deserializing it into JSON so that we can return that result. So the code here, if you've ever worked with calling APIs from C Sharp, this is very boilerplate and cookie cutter stuff. And you could easily copy and paste this from um, the Twitter API site, just like we did for the most part, and then changed it up a little bit uh, to meet our use case. If we take a look at other files here inside of our Azure Function app code, we can look at the functions class. And this is actually the definition of the search tweets that gets invoked. And in turn, you can see it calls into that get Twitter users, which we just looked at there. Uh, so just again, uh, standard how you create an Azure function here um, and uh, how you implement a function and put the code in it to, to do such a pattern where you're shelling out to call another API like this one here. So as we can see, this is really very easy to do. Uh, again, a quick overview is we create the Azure function, we deploy the Azure function to Azure, then we create the connection to the Logic App function, then we invoke that particular function by calling run and passing in the search term and the from date and the to date. And that returns us the data that we then can bind up and see 
who's been part of the Power App CC uh, community and tweeting on Twitter in the last days, which eventually, as I showed you, gives us this awesome word art here. And the really cool thing I like about this site too is if you would like to do this for some other theme, like, hey, look at this one. Our community all is a big part of it and we all love each other so much. Bang, now I got another cool word art just like that. So I'm looking forward to using these on the community call uh, in the future, as well as this app. And I hope this app comes in handy for you and helps you get some ideas on how you can automate things with uh, different APIs to create really cool things like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Would you like to work together sometime? My team and I work on Power Apps, Azure, Office 365 projects like this all the time with folks we meet from YouTube videos. If you think we could help you out, drop us a line at canvas.com. Thanks and have a good day.